Live, where news comes first. This is ABC7 with breaking news. Breaking news from triple digit temperatures to this hail in a matter of minutes. This is video captured by our crews. Pea sized hail coming down in far east El Paso. You can see just a small bit, but man, it really swept in. Yeah, we issued the ABC 7 first alert to warn you about the hot temperatures, but this storm developed this afternoon very quickly. Just take a look at what you see behind us here. Some more of that hail video coming to us. And this is from ABC 7 viewers Rick and Susan Ramirez. You can see the hail falling in their backyard. It looks pretty heavy at that point. And we've been bringing this storm as breaking news since ABC 7 at 4 when it started as a haboob and a big dust wall coming from far east El Paso moving west. It's been moving westbound and basically covered most of El Paso until it reached the Franklin Mountains. Let's give you a live look with uh, of El Paso with the ABC 7 mountain camera, what it looks like outside right now. You can still see it is very dusty out there, uh, very miserable looking as these conditions have not been great for us. But uh, that storm as it moved its way west did kind of bounce its way off of the Franklins and then headed northeast towards Chaparral. And it also cooled us down dramatically. We were 10 degrees hotter just an hour or so ago, and now we want to give you a live look at the roads and the conditions that we are seeing right now with our ABC 7 traffic track. This is Loop 375 and Spurt 1966 over on the west side of El Paso. We can see it doesn't look very bright. The clouds and dust still hanging overhead, but it does not look like the roads are wet at this time there. Look at Loop 375 and Porfirio Diaz staying on that side of town again. Same issue. It just looks like the roads have dried. Uh, everything that was wet has been dried because of the temperatures. Now let's get our storm track weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist. Just Doppler Dave Spillen, who's been tracking this storm over the last couple of hours in Doppler. There's still a lot of activity on the radar. It's just making its way uh, north of the uh, Texas state line. Yeah, this was a push we were talking about. We had some easterly winds, a boundary, a gust front that came through here. Once it started to move through, it dragged with it a lot of moisture, a lot of fuel. And we're seeing these thunderstorms. Now you get west of the Franklin Mountains, the air is still very dry. We're not seeing any activity develop, but this is the storm. It's been moving northbound out of El Paso County. You can see it's still kind of hanging tough, El Paso County. Uh, there is a look at the, the Chaparral area, and uh, we are tracking this storm. Michelle called me. She said the rain is coming down. Hadn't seen any hail here, but look at the hail core. This is what we're looking at. We're going to stop the radar motion just to give you an idea. So there it is. There's the hail core. Likely seen maybe some pea size hail, maybe some nickel size hail. This is very heavy rain that is coming down as well. We'll put it back into motion. So again, you kind of see it will zoom out just a little bit. So Highway 54 Newman, but again, uh, the southeastern portion of Doniana County now into the southwestern portion of Otero County. That is where the brunt force of the storm is located. We have our storm tracker, Katie Frazier. She's been tracking the storm and the winds out there as well. Katie's on our uh, front porch, so to speak. And Katie, the storm certainly meant business. Dave, that storm was fairly strong. Me and you were watching it very closely. We got a couple reports of some nickel sized hail, some penny sized hail as well. Now, when I was up on the roof about an hour ago, I was tracking just how close the storm was to this very location at our station in West El Paso off of Executive. It was as close as five miles away diagonally right from this location. Now it's about 21 miles away. So that tells you just how much it has moved from more of the central area of town all the way up to the north east part of town close up to chaparral up there so we are definitely tracking this storm we're going to keep you updated and we also want to remind you you can always download the kbia traffic and weather app we have sent out a couple alerts just to keep you updated on the stats of the storm what storm reports we were seeing so definitely a great way to keep in touch with us the meteorologists here at abc7 of course we also love to see your pictures as well so definitely send those through the share tab on our website as well. So I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to you guys for now. All right, Katie, thank you. And ABC 7's Dylan McKim was on a story in Far East El Paso when the storm popped up and he files this report. Hey guys, I'm out here in the Far East El Paso at the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. We're actually in their firing range right now. About 20 minutes ago, we were told to go outside. Maybe some inclement weather. We saw some dangerous clouds, inclement weather coming in. A lot of dust, a lot of wind, but no rain. 
all of a sudden hail starting to come down right now. It's been raining like this for about 20, almost 30 minutes. We've had like marble sized hail come down. Again, we're filming this around 5 10 p.m. This is uh, not live right now. It's filmed at 5 10, but the rain is still coming down. The hail has stopped. I'm able to actually come out here and not get pelted right now, but really strong rain. So if you are in the area, be careful on the roads. We'll send it back to you. All right, Dylan, thank you. And you can check out KVI.com right now. Here is Dylan's report that you just saw on this story on KVI.com right now. Wild Wednesday weather kicks up wind, dust, hail, and rain. And we have uh, put in some videos here, of course, what Dylan sent in earlier, but also this time-lapse video of the haboob. It'll play an ad here for a moment. But all these videos are located on the website kvi.com right now. We are continuing uh, to uh, put videos on this page as you send them in. Again, as Katie mentioned, you can click on this share tab in the top right corner. That will allow you to send or send your videos, your photos, as long as it's safe to do so at share at kvi.com. But you can see just how quickly this all moved in into our area from the far, far east side across town moving west and then really taking over our viewing area. And even if you didn't get the rain, you probably felt the wind, you saw the dust, you felt all that in the air right now. And even as we walk back into the studio here at the start of this newscast, Stephanie made the comment a moment ago about how muggy it feels in here with some of that moisture in the air. But again, all this available to you right now on KVIA.com. And please continue to submit your photos and weather video on the share tab uh, right here located on KVIA.com. Click on share. You'll be able to upload your photos and videos there or share at KVIA.com. And we would like to share those with you, our viewers, on ABC 7 at 10 as we continue to get more videos of the weather happening right now. Stephanie. Right, and so many parts of town experiencing so many different elements. Eric, thank you. Now the fire continues to burn outside of Kingston and Hillsborough, New Mexico, and we wanted to see how people who live there are preparing. ABC 7's Will Heron and our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom are there. It's coming out of the forest and into the grasslands. Something I want you guys to see is just how dry the grass is in this area. Ted was telling us that they hadn't had rain in about two months. And I want you to kind of see how brittle and dry it is and the sounds that it makes. This stuff is perfect for catching fire. I've got my hoses set out and ready to go. My wife and I will spray down the roof. All of the structures back here have metal roofs. Back in that direction is where the fire is. Now, if it keeps encroaching in this direction where Ted lives, he has a plan on how to get out of here and to safety. Why again are you wetting down the roof? In case hot embers land and they won't ignite the shingles. My wife and I and the dogs get out of here in one shape. The rest of this is replaceable. That wind vane right there is what Ted is using to know just exactly where that fire is going and how fast it may get here. Right now with the fires, I probably look at it three or four times a day. Smelling smoke is one thing, seeing fire is another. If it gets into some of the dry grasses that are close to town, if it ignites a structure, that's where the town is going to be in trouble. Ted's been here for 11 years, and every day at 4 o'clock, he comes out here with his wife and friends for a glass of wine. He hopes to continue that tradition, even though that fire may be on its way. Here in Hillsboro with the New Mexico Momo Newsroom, I'm Will Heron, ABC7. The Southwest Area Incident Management Team that issues emergency information to those in the area of the fire say they're also supporting a unique mission. Along with fighting the fire, the team is transporting Gila trout out and relocating them to Diamond Creek outside of the fire area. The murder trial continues for Ricardo de Marquez, accused of killing Erica Gaetan three years ago. Marquez and Gaetan attended a concert together in 2019 and later went to Marquez's home. Marquez told police they had a small argument before they left his home. She has not been seen or heard from since. And earlier today, jurors saw the police interrogation video as the detective questioned if the attention Gaitan received from other men resulted in that argument. ABC 7 Sarah Correa was in the courtroom and joins us live from the county courthouse with the latest. Sarah. That interrogation video recorded December 4th, 2019 was the day of Marquez's arrest. And now that video was played inside the courthouse. And in that video, um, it revealed detectives saying that 
Marquez was firm during the interrogation, saying he had no contact with Gaitan after 2 a.m. the morning she disappeared. Detective Rodriguez says, however, that evidence found proves otherwise. In the interrogation video, Detective Rodriguez says evidence was found in the back of Marquez's brother's Jeep, confirming that Gaitan was in it. He says this is important because Marquez borrowed the Jeep at 11.30 a.m. That's more than nine hours after Marquez says he last saw Gaitan. The detective says the evidence found in the back of the Jeep was Gaitan's blood. Marquez says the detective asked the detective how they would know it was Gaitan's blood, and the detective responded by saying, I'm not telling you this, science is telling you this. And during the video, Detective Rodriguez says the possibility of identification error was zero and that forensic evidence gathered puts Gaitan's blood combined with Marquez's saliva in the back seat of the Jeep past the time Marquez says he last saw her. And now this is conflicting discussion as opposed to earlier this week with forensic experts that say there was no blood found on the shovel and that they could not confirm that it was Gaitan's blood. But for now, reporting from the county courthouse, Sarah Coria, ABC7. All right, Sarah, thank you for that live update. We continue to follow the storms that are sweeping across El Paso. We have a live look at the roads and the conditions we're seeing right now with our ABC7 traffic track. This is US 54, where you can see traffic moving pretty slowly out there. The roads looking pretty wet as well as we saw that storm moving north toward Chaparral. And you could see again, this is that area that we're talking about. Doppler, we saw a lot of hail as well. Uh, we did. And I'll tell you what, let's go right to Doppler radar and check out the hail core. It started here on the east side of town. And then look at this, just north of Loop 375, upwards towards the north, that's where we have been tracking the hail. And you see some of the darker purples here, north of Chaparral. This is where maybe we we're seeing some of the larger hail. Now, Doppler radar was indicating maybe quarter size hail. Haven't heard of any quarter size hail. Most of it has been pea size, upwards to about nickel size. But we we'll continue to watch the storm. We continue to track it. We'll show you that coming up in weather. Our first alert coverage continues. This is ABC 7 at 6. Where news comes first.